gave us another day. Another day, another day to love on him, another day of healing, another day of prosperity. Our God is a mighty God. He is an awesome God and he reigns and I thank him each and every day for the life that he's given me. With any trials, with any tribulations, I still stand. I still war and you still war. Today is the day that God has made. I don't know about y'all, but I am grateful and I am thankful to the Lord for all that he is. He is Adonai. He is Emmanuel. Mm, he is everything. He is our Valentine. Today is Valentine. He's got the most love that anybody could have for you. So I am grateful and thankful and happy Valentine's Day to everybody. So good morning, New Beginnings. Um, my title for today is Manifesting Holiness. So I'm going to pray. Father, our God, we thank you. We praise you today, oh God. Oh God, continue to rest in this place. Rest in our hearts and rest in our minds, God. Father God, lead us and guide us in everything that we do, Father. Father, I am your vessel. I am your vessel. Use me today as your servant. Let your will be done. Push back, push down my flesh, God. And let your words come through my mouth, God. Let your wellsprings be in my belly. Father, I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. So I said today, my title is Manifesting Holiness. Are we as a body manifesting holiness? What does that look like, manifesting holiness? Webster's definition of holiness is the state of being holy, a life of holiness and total devotion to God. Some people define holiness as holiness is the most sparkling jewel of God's crown. R.L. Dabney wrote, holiness is to be regarded not as a distinct attribute, but as a result of all God's moral perfection together. So if you'll turn with me to Isaiah chapter 57, verse 14 through 15. And it says, and it will be said, build up, build up, prepare the road, remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. For this is what the high and exalted one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy, I live in a high and holy place, but also with one who is contrite and lowly in spirit. Revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Right here, God is telling us that his name is holy and that he lives in a high and holy place. When we look at this, we can get an understanding to manifest holiness. We must ascend to the high place where he dwells, that place where we can tune out the things of the world, where we can leave all of our baggage and focus on him and holiness. See, there's a dimension of living you can only experience when you make a decision to please the Father in every area of your life. And that dimension, Jesus becomes real to you and manifests himself to you. As you discover how to be holy, his power becomes alive in you. And with that power comes the power of prayer, the power of intercession, the power to lay hands on the sick and they arise, the power to speak prophetically. All these things happen when you manifest holiness. Have you ever in your prayer time told God, I want to be holy, but not really had a true understanding 
of what holiness really is. See, I'm going to keep it real. I have. And God finally asked me, daughter, what does holiness mean? What does it mean to you? He said, go and research. Do your part. Now, see, there are times when we want God to do all the work for us. But he expects that we do our part. He said, no more coming before my phone without a deeper understanding of what you ask. He said, all I could say was, ooh, ouch. Yeah, God, you got me there. But that's just me. I don't know about anybody else. I don't know if there have been times in your life when you ask things from God that you haven't really taken the time to get an understanding of what you're asking for. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom in all thy getting. Get understanding. When going before the Father, it is essential that we have understanding. And you can only get that by studying the word of God and ascending to the high place to meet with God. And in your meeting, you're able to speak his words to him and ask for the things that you have an understanding of. Not just asking for things because you heard some other person speak about it or you heard somebody else praying about it, because, but because you have did the research and you have an understanding within you of what it is that you ask him for. In Ephesians 4 and 24, it says, you put on the new man, which was created according to God and true righteousness and holiness. This scripture tells us that righteousness and holiness are two different things. Righteousness is what happens to you when you are born again. When you were made righteous, you were made righteous when you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. But holiness is another matter. Holiness simply means to separate to God or, con or conduct befitting those souls separated. To separate means to set apart, to disunite, to divide, to sever, to disconnect, to part company, and to go in a different direction, to cease to be associated to become distinct, distinct or disengaged as cream separates from milk and rises to the top. Or when we eat a banana. When we eat a banana, we gotta take off the skin. You can't eat the banana with the skin on it. So to manifest holiness, we have to separate ourselves from the things of this world. And that means all things, not some things, but all things and truly take the time to know our Father's heart and gain a, deep, a deeper understanding of him and holiness. This is key to manifesting holiness, knowing the Father's heart. God longs to know you. He longs for you to make time to simply seek his face and get to know his personality the nature of his love, and the availability of his presence. You don't have to live without a real revelatory knowledge of God's heart. You don't have to live with the uncertainty of whether you are cared for, provided for, or loved. We don't have to live that way. We have a choice. In the life death and resurrection of Jesus, God provided, God proved his longing to know us. Jesus took on flesh, not just so he could save and redeem us, but so that he could usher in a better, a truer revelation of who the father is. In John 17, three, Jesus says, now this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And later in verse 26, Jesus prays to the Father, I have made you known to them, 
and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Jesus came that we might know the love of the Father, that we will know God's heart. We have to make a conscious decision that holiness will be what we manifest. That we will no longer be connected to nothing else. We literally have to unplug from the world just like you unplug something plugged into the wall. We have to disconnect from the world and plug into holiness. Conduct our lives according to God's commandments and laws. Making sure that our time and our actions are manifesting holiness. Living a life that is pleasing unto our Father and in his presence. Manifesting holiness. In my researching, I found that holiness is a fruit that can only be produced by us developing a relationship with the Father. In our society today, people have so many relationships. We have business relationships. We have friend relationships. We have family relationships and many other things. And we tend to let those things or people be our motivation when it should be our love for God and the relationship that we have with him that motivates us and leads us to manifest holiness. We have to flee from temptation, from temptation. And we are all tempted in one way or another each and every day. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tempted every day. There's something that I have to battle every day. But we cannot any longer be afraid. We have to stand abiding in the high place with God. It's much easier to tell Satan to get behind me and continue to move and follow God's commandments and live a life that manifests holiness when we stand, when we ascend to the high place. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10 through 12 says, For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. I'm going to say that again. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might understand things freely given us by God. God has made the way for you to know his heart. You can know him infinitely deeper and more transformative ways than you can ever know, even your best friend or your spouse. The Holy Spirit, God himself, dwells within you and longs to reveal the deep things of God to you. And if we have ascended to the high place, Satan is under our feet. He cannot come to the high place because he already been kicked out. He's not allowed back in the high place. We have to have a made up mind and choose God this day. Tell the Father you want more of him. You desire a relationship with him, not just scratching the surface, but a deeper relationship with the one that will help you and show you the way to manifest holiness. It's time out for play. If you ain't noticed, the enemy of your soul is not playing in this season, in this era. Starts are firing left and right. So if you don't wake up in the morning and put on your war gear, shame on you. Because in this season, baby, you need your shield for, to block every fiery dart. And I'm not saying that it's all from the enemy. Some of it is God's vetting. He 
is showing us those things that are still in us that can no longer stay if we want to manifest holiness. In this era, we can no longer serve our flesh. It's all God or bust. We have to make a decision and choose the back and forth thing he's no longer having. I don't know about anybody else, but things are getting hard. You're watching what's going around you. Things are getting hard. Now, people are dying left and right. People you know, people that you grew up with. Things are happening. COVID, is, it ain't left. God let COVID be here. Understand he is tired of us. It's time out for play. There's no more playing. He's not allowing that in this season. I'd like to give you today tools to use to manifest holiness. The first one is meditate on what scripture says about the knowability of God's heart. Let God's word fill you with faith to seek a deeper relationship with your father. Everybody, God is there and he offers, he wants a relationship with us. He wants to know us. He wants you to know him. But he also is a gentleman and he gives us choices. Who will you choose this day? Number two, ask God to reveal an aspect of his heart that you need to know. Ask him how he feels about you. Ask him to reveal just how near and loving he is. Rest in his presence and manifest holiness. Number three, thank God for how available he is to us. Worship him because he paid the ultimate price simply for you to know him. As you pour out thankfulness on him, watch as he pours his presence out over you and you will manifest holiness. Because he is holiness. We have to take advantage of what Jesus paid a high price for. He paid the price for us to go deeper. He paid the price for us to have a relationship with God and manifest holiness. We have holiness is something we cannot be without in our walk. We to walk upright and to walk towards the cross, holiness is what is part of what we have to have. I've listed the tools today. Knowing the Father's heart, getting a relationship with him, pushing our flesh, unplugging from the world, and walking in the holiness that he has provided for us. It's there, but we got to want it. There are those that are sailing through this time because they're ascended in the high place and they don't come down. They stay in the high place. And that's pretty tricky. It's pretty hard to stay in the high place. It means continual prayer. It, it, it means no matter what it is that you woke up, if you woke up and stubbed your toe, you're letting that go. If you woke up and, and, and you got all these text messages that are negative, if anything that is not positive for that day, because the enemy wants to steal your day. He does not want you to have a day that is filled with God. But if you wake up in the morning, first thing, not the cup of coffee, not talking to the spouse, but first thing 
Go to prayer and put on your war gear. Be ready for battle because every day is a battle. But are you ready? Don't nobody go to the front lines of war without their gear on. You're going to be the first one to get taken out. We have to decide in the day. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I put on the full armor today, God. Binding and rebuking every plot, plan, and snare of the enemy. This is necessary to manifest holiness. Worshiping throughout the day. Speaking his word over whatever is thrown at you that day. God, in this season, he is no longer letting us get away with some of the stuff that we used to get away with. He's not having that anymore. And he's calling us out on it. So I just ask today that you get an understanding of the things that you ask God for in prayer. Understand what you're asking for. Get a deeper revelation with him. And manifest holiness. There may be somebody today that does not know Christ. I ask that you would say this prayer with me today. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, and we submit our lives unto you, Father. Father, we repent. We repent, God, for all the things that we have done to grieve your spirit. God, we repent for those things that we did, even the things that we didn't know that we were doing that was unlike you, Father. Father, we give our lives to you. We receive your salvation. Father, lead us and guide us each day the steps to manifest holiness. Father, I give you my life. I give you my heart. Father, and I declare you Lord, sovereign king over my life. Have your way, God. Your will be done. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Amen and amen.